talked about Troy Deeney being an influence in this game, and that is exactly what he has been. But to me, not justice has been done. To 50 miles an hour or so. Uh, we are in the Lake Balboa area here. Uh, and this, this section of Victory Boulevard that's three lanes and really wide open driving up to 70 miles an hour now uh, on this one. So uh, again, you know, if, if Elliot and get me and his run, maybe just be, you know, staying backed off and waiting for them to, to find somewhere where they you can get out and run. Out and, you know, you don't want to see the suspect get away, but uh, maybe at least a little bit less danger for the public is is the, the calculus anyway. Yeah, because there's not that much not much they can do of driving at those kinds of speeds. They certainly couldn't do a, do a pit maneuver. And you know, when, when I heard you say that they were circling or staying in the same area, that could be a possibility for them to kind of guess if they're going to come back around and lay a spike strip. But right, and go ahead, Mike. Yeah, they they are. There is some talk about uh, something yeah. that they want to do to bring this to an end, and that's. You know, there was a pursuit earlier today, the same situation. The person kept going in circles in the same area, mm -hmm. and that is what gave LAPD the opportunity right. to lay a spike strip down. So we'll see if they can get one out here. Now, are they on White Oak Avenue now? That's yeah, another White pretty, Oak, right there in the, in the, yeah. That's a pretty wide yeah, street, a, too. A, a more narrow street. Well, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, you got two lanes each direction with a bike lane, but yeah, so not as wide as Victory. But, yeah, I mean, still, you know, a fairly major street here that's going to uh, terminate into a residential zone if we continue here up past uh, Roscoe. Roscoe and Balboa were the first streets that we heard about where this called up. So right by Van Nuys Airport on kind of the, the northwest corner of the airport as they go right through that traffic. Oh, there they uh, were. There for a light that I think had. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Got, it happened so fast I didn't even see it. But yeah, I don't. Um, was I, it a good yeah, one, yeah, guys? Really I looked like a good spike. I, I don't think it made contact. No, the mm. officer was standing on the corner there and was able to toss him out. But because they were driving on the wrong side and were coming back around, I don't think they made contact. Um, Des and Mike. Yeah. Okay, considering the direction that they're going, could they possibly run up on uh, the 405 freeway? Oh my goodness. Now we're paralleling the 405 right now. We're still pretty far west of there. We're driving towards the 118, but White Oak will not get the suspect there because the uh, train tracks are going to cut them off and they'll, they'll have to uh, make their way over to Balboa or Reseda. Uh, so we'll see what the suspect does if uh, once they if they get up to Roscoe instead and we're going to turn before uh, that onto Strathern as we make an eastbound turn here back into another small neighborhood. So and then another quick turn southbound. So uh, I'm also <laughs> calling out these directions to help my pilot because it is a lot uh, to yeah, you know, for them all this, this zigging and zagging, you know, turn left, turn right. And uh, so, yeah, all over the place now, Shoshone Avenue back into one of these tiny neighborhoods. So, you know, what is the point of uh, doing all this? And again, there's that lights off again. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely trying to, well, and then the lights back on. But that's super dangerous for them, too. If the street's not lit well and you're going to go 40, 50 miles an hour, then you may as well close your eyes because you can't see anything in front of you. So really, really crazy stuff out on the stack street here. I think this will get it back towards uh, Balboa. But uh, just really, really hate seeing this. I mean, you hate seeing it anyway, but especially in these uh, narrow residential neighborhood streets. Yeah, and even darker now. Now they hit, uh, looks like they turned the lights off again. Maybe they're driving with the foot on the brake. I don't know. Or did they turn? No, I could see the headlights again. It's uh, very interesting as well. Now they're in Encino Avenue. Does, does it give you a sense that they could possibly know this area pretty well and know oh. where they're going? I, I, I'm really not sure. I mean, I, it kind of just feels like they're looking for a dark street where they could turn the lights off and maybe, you know, dump the car and run into a neighborhood or something like that. You know, unfortunately, they do have some lead time right now on LAPD because they have been in tracking mode. But the helicopter up there has been doing, you know, a really great job of keeping up with this suspect and the, and the crazy driving. I've seen them th uh, go through our shot a couple of times as we're right next to an elementary school. Uh, right now, another vehicle that's just kind of parked out there, definitely not mm -hmm. expecting someone to come fly up behind him uh, at this late hour. So now coming back out onto Sherman Way, another major street making a uh, westbound turn. So, yeah, I mean, is there any rhyme or reason? It, it's really kind of hard to tell at this point. It just seems like a, a, a panicked suspect kind of doing whatever they can. Yeah, it does at this point. Another All right, there's about. another wide turn there um, again if they're looking for them i mean they've certainly stolen run up on vehicle a it's a fucking walking shit and, box uh, trash piece of garbage where they could have possibly um tried to ditch the vehicle but i mean like you say des that chopper is really keeping up with these uh 
with these guys. I say these guys not knowing if there's more than one person in the vehicle. But Encino, oh. Sherman, so Balboa. And you know what? I mean, it, it looks like LAPD may actively be back in pursuit. There you go, yes. The, there you go. Uh, their spotlight and they have their, uh, their, their flashing lights back on. They're not too far back there now. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, we see the authorities back off, but then if the suspect's going to drive like a maniac, then you're getting the both the worst of both worlds, where they're they're getting away and you are still endangering, you know, and the public is still being endangered because uh, they're still driving really crazy. So they kind of look like they maybe they're re-engaging in this one. Back out onto uh, Van Owen Street here. So we've we've covered a lot of the east-west streets and a lot of these little neighborhoods. Um, yeah, definitely wondering if there's going to be a, uh, a you know, if they're going to get out and run here. I say there, we're, we're not sure how many people are in the car uh, still at this point, but uh, lights back off here, 55 miles an hour. Yep, and we've seen them on Shoshone Avenue before um, in, in this same area. So we'll see what happens. Um, if they're Yo, nice lines, hold on. As, uh, we've seen so many times with these pursuits where Stop they can now. make a move in, in dumping the vehicle and doing a foot bail. And again, we're not exactly sure how many are in this vehicle or not, but this is a stolen, uh, a stolen Hyundai, as Des mentioned, a Hyundai Santa Fe, which is a very popular vehicle when it comes to um, being on that list of, of cars that uh, thieves whoa, like to steal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that was close. First time we've seen yeah. that. Yo! Right mm. Yeah, that was the closest call I think we've seen. I think they had to slam on the brakes there. I saw a little bit of, oh, they, another spike strip attempt there. That looked like a way better attempt. That was very, very well timed. Uh, maybe Mike, you'll hear on the radio. Oh, no, you got him. Good spike or not. I yeah, couldn't quite tell. Right it was very, very close there. So that means they're probably getting even more desperate to try to ditch that car. We just saw sparks. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Uh -huh. And uh, out at parked. So I think maybe the spike strip was good because yeah, all of a sudden here. successful. Or if they just realized LAPD, all right. And they, oh, look they at knew that LAPD spotlight. was not, not messing around anymore. And they decided to uh, park the vehicle, and hopefully we're going to see some hands out the window here shortly at Welby and Yarmouth in Reseda. Okay, do you see um, LAPD well, behind the vehicle? Uh, uh oh. What did well, you say? Yeah, but nah, they oh, were just, that. Well, I wouldn't they were do just that. reversing right there. Yeah, LAPD is out there now with weapons oh, I see drawn now. and definitely okay. commanding the suspect to come out. But I, well, I just saw the reverse lights for a second, which made me kind of nervous. So, uh, and as always, we've smoking. got the pursuit tent, the super dark uh, windows on this one. But uh, still no movement from the suspect inside. Yeah, you know, and as, as Mike just pointed out, that uh, right tire, front tire is smoking. You see that smoke yeah, coming out yeah, of front? Right? Uh, yeah, we saw sparks. We the the we, yeah, we do. I mean, they, it was also a lot of hard braking going yeah. on, you know, with, with the, the suspect. So I don't, I don't know if the brakes caught fire or if the, if the vehicle's overheating. Yeah, quite a bit of smoke coming out, like more that you know you would just expect that from from that spike strip so uh maybe maybe the vehicle you know just gave up the ghost on this one it had uh, had enough of the super hard driving and uh i mean i'm not sure if it's overheating that that's kind of what it's looking like here <laughs> nice on the hazards they okay got their, um, hazard lights on <laughs> so that, they just <laughs> just turned those on what was that for yeah you know <laughs> You see him, you know, earlier in the pursuit, they had, uh, they had the lights was off, swapping, they had the he's swapping off, seats they were using the turn signal. You know, you just never know what these, uh, what's, what's going through these suspects' minds is now I think they've uh, turned it off. But who's this? All of a sudden, just coming up to this vehicle. Uh, this is random. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Hello? If, uh, this is... Somebody's mother? Okay. Uh, Wife? Maybe his, maybe his mother or, or a relative and who just came up. Oh. Or, or the owner of the vehicle, you know, I, I don't know, but this is very, very weird. And uh, definitely probably her son, like and then she called it in as stolen. And she's putting her hands in the pockets. Might not want to do that, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's uh, not doing that. Well, she's putting her shirt down. Yeah, Chill yeah. out, lady. <laughs> okay, now she's telling him to come in, but, I mean, this is, you know, all definitely uh, against what, you know, LAPD wants to see right now, but. Uh, I, is she trying to pull him out? Uh-huh. Yeah, it yeah, looks like looks like a young kid, maybe a teenager here. Well, and there's I don't, another. I don't know if this is her son or, or or what the deal is. Yeah, so we do have multiple people in the car. Uh, looks to be pretty young. Also be a teenage driver. Uh, not the first time that we've seen wow. that. But, uh, you know, just because the mother's here doesn't mean that they're, you know, going to get off scot-free. They're still going to have to follow procedure and get some handcuffs right now. Uh, well, I don't know. Did we just see some responsible parenting there? Uh, she just I went mean, over and said, get out. <laughs> Look, it, it brought, it, brought it to an end. Yeah, and, and okay, officers, yeah. come on now, because you can take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I was very weird. I was, if this was some kind of misunderstanding or, or, or what the deal was. Surely. Again, this was a reported stolen vehicle, but uh, obviously but they didn't, a lot of they uh, didn't familiarity stop. there with somebody of, yeah, I mean, if they stopped kind of right by their house or, or what the deal is, but now uh, having to uh, kiss the pavement here before LAPD comes in, they're going to do one at a time. They're going to come in, have them sprawled out, and then they're going to ask the passenger to do the same. And then uh, they're probably going to have come slap handcuffs on both of them and then go check the vehicle for anybody else. You know what? Um, so I'm back on uh, on the woman. Possibly I'm going to say it's somebody's mother. Um, is, she, is she still down there, Daz? Or she just kind of walked away and said, OK, you can get them now. Well, yeah, there's a little bit of tree cover here. Can't quite tell. It looked like she walked away. But yeah, she just kind of, kind of materialized out of nowhere and so casually uh, walked up almost like uh, this was I don't know. That, such I mean, that shit was dangerous as fuck. Driver isn't this. bad, but uh, still, that's pretty crazy. Fucking. But uh, you're just really lucky that you know it ended like this, and uh, you know, regardless, the owner of the vehicle, lucky that their vehicle's intact, but at the very least, going to need some new tires. And you're right, Des. When you think about it, I mean, the you, the, the, the officers well, were you, stopped you out of the car. I couldn't tell. Uh, did they have guns drawn or not? I mean, I couldn't. Oh, yeah. They did have yeah. guns drawn, and she just kind of walks up, knocks on the window, starts motioning to the officers like, I got this. And then it, she kind of scared me when she started fidgeting with her pants. I'm like, I don't know if you want to do that. But uh, now it looks like she did what she had to do. She got them out of the car. They surrendered. Yeah, but this I, was something to see. I suppose so. I mean, uh, there's, OK, there they are right there. Uh, there, she's standing there with someone else, maybe another relative, maybe a, a sibling or something. Again, you know, we're not entirely sure, but obviously some sort of familiar re relationship between the driver and the woman who just came and walked up. And now uh, putting handcuffs on the passenger first, and then they're going to come up and uh, get the driver. So very, very curious situation. But with that insane driving that we saw, uh, for us to be able to kind of, you know, joke about this uh, strange ending. Feel pretty lucky about that. Absolutely, because no one well, was hurt. There were no accidents. Thank God. Lost. Unlucky.